Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Steve with Real Progressives. So let's make sure we have our connection working right here for a second. Let's give everybody a chance to get on board here. Um, hopefully we're not encroaching on that 9 o'clock witching hour where so many uh, tend to migrate to different streams. But one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight is the concept of the full cup. The full cup, you know, the cup has so much fluid in it, right? And when it's full, you can't put anything else into it. The full cup knows all. It's already, um, it's reached its peak. It can't do any more. It can't learn anymore. It, it, it's exhausted its usefulness. So when we're looking at full cups in the progressive movement, the key with being a progressive is being open to new information, right? When new information presents itself, you make decisions based on truth, not partisan loyalty, not some old thing that your grandma taught you, you know, not something you learned back in 1970. Um, you know, you, you, you learn new things, new dogs learn new tricks, and you figure out what works, what doesn't work. You take the best available information and you make better decisions than you did yesterday, right? That's kind of like the deal with being a progressive. Unfortunately, we are surrounded by an awful lot of people that maybe, eh, maybe they don't get that. No, they're what I call the full cup. And the problem with full cups is that they tend to try to overshadow people that are really striving for new information are really striving to fix the problems that we're facing today. And so earlier tonight in a stream I did, it was a very short stream I did in particular for one of our followers who reached out to me directly and asked me to answer a question. And so I went ahead and did a custom, it was short, like six minute stream to try and address his issues. And we had some guy in there calling me a charlatan you know, uh, a liar, uh, easy money peddler, um, all this stuff. And that, you know, first things first, I've never, ever said that you can just sprint money forever. What I've always said, and for anybody that's paid one minute of attention, I've always talked about sectoral balances. Sectoral balances are the measurements that we look at to figure out where we are in the economy. You know, we look at certain things such as, are we a net importer? Are we a net exporter? Do we have unemployment? Do we have underemployment? Um, are we actually steeped in private debt? Um, and if so, then we need to spend from the one place that we can spend. That is what I've said repeatedly. And yes, as long as the conditions of being a net importer and having unemployment and having high private debt exist, the sovereign can spend and not be inflationary. In fact, it must spend to keep the economy going or the economy will completely and utterly dry up and go bankrupt, like places like Puerto Rico, like places like Greece. They're net importers and they have to have some infusion of cash, unfortunately, they're in a debt spiral that is going to take both of them down, down, down. Now, full disclosure, I have a Master of Business Administration and I have a Master of Science and Technology Management. That equals absolutely bupkis. I've had to unlearn so much of my grad school learnings, all the teachings that I had, um, were largely focused on monetarism, Friedman, Milton Friedman. Um, yes, some Keynes, you had all the traditional classical economists that we had to learn about. But the thing that we learned really was monetarism, right? Say's Law, the Phillips Curve, you know, uh, printing too much money makes inflation, all that quantity of money theory crap, right? All gold standard logic. 
Well, in order for me to ever make any valuable progress for my own personal self, like I didn't start learning this stuff so I could live stream. I had no idea about live streaming. Live streaming didn't even exist at the time. I guess you could have done it on YouTube, but I've never been one to do that stuff. I'm an accidental live streamer, right? This stuff happened as we created Real Progressives and we built up a base. And you know, when you get 30 or 40,000 people checking your stuff out and you have a message to tell, why not go ahead and live stream, right? Why not tell the story? But the thing is, is that I really truly didn't have a clue about economics when I was going through grad school. I'm taking all these classes and it didn't make any sense to me. I hated economics. It wasn't my worst subject, but it was right near the bottom of horrible subjects. Subjects that I would read and I'd go, oh my God, what the hell are they talking about? Why do I care? It was just the most boring subject in the world to me. Like, I couldn't get past how boring it was. And they would sit there and make you read these long, long books, man. They were thick and dense. And they had formulas in it. It was like, oh my God, what am I reading? And of course, because I had kids and I was a full-time employee, I was pouring through these books at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning on a 64-ounce cup of coffee. <laughs> And it was always just bouncing off me. And then we would have these team projects. And I was the dude that was like, can I see your homework, man? Can I see your homework? I don't get this crap. Can you explain to me this crap? I don't get it. I'm not joking. It was very, very, very difficult to understand Keynes and Friedman and all those guys, Hayek. And so as I took my Republican thinking, remember I was a Republican years ago, okay? When I took that thinking in there, I just kept thinking it's real simple. It's just simple, simple, simple. Cut taxes, cut spending, you damn lazy bastards, okay? Very, very simple stuff to learn. The Republican economics is the easiest on the planet, you know? You're lazy, you're no good, cut the government out of our lives. You've, you, now you're a, you're a Republican, right? It's done. It's easy. Simple Simon. Oh, spend on the military. There you go. Let me fill that out. So through the course of time, hanging out with different people, you know, I started migrating away from some of those beliefs based on ending the drug war. Ironically, ending the drug war was what really got me going into learning economics because it started hitting me. I was like, damn, I know we're all born with the basic brain, with the basic, you know, all this, all the genetic material to do well, how come minority populations kept getting stuck in spirals? They get getting trapped in these situations. Now, I attack this as a Republican, not as like a progressive, okay? So remember, my thought processes were trying to figure out why these lazy sound bitches, okay? We're always in trouble. Why there was all these problems. And it finally started hitting me. It was like, well, son of a bitch. So, no wonder, man. You keep putting them in jail. They can't get a good job. Now, all of a sudden, they're a creature of the system. And it self-perpetuates. And then the spiral begins. And then Republicans, like I used to be, can sit there and look down our nose at people and say... You should have made better choices. You should have made better choices, Chauncey. So that got me thinking about economics because it made no sense that these people were stuck living off of crumbs, living off of friggin' welfare and all these things, snap and this and that. And of course I had to look down my nose there too. You know, if you made better choices, things would be better for you, right? Well, I got pinched by the laws. I've told you all before. I got popped ways back, back in 2002. And so now all of a sudden, white Republican dude with an education is going through the same shit these poor people were going through. And light bulbs were going off like crazy. It's like, oh shit, that's what you were talking about. Son of a bitch. Wow. So I had to learn the hard way, 
Unfortunately, that's kind of what happens to Republicans. A lot of Republicans were born with the sun shining on them. Not all, not the working class, but many of the other ones. And same with the limousine liberals, the same with the, the blue dog Democrats, you know, that these, these uh, you know, they're just out there thinking the world is their oyster, you know. And it took an awful lot to shake that from me. So when I was going through grad school, it was difficult, but I picked up on it. I started trying to put some things together, but it was only after grad school that I got introduced to like, you know, MMT, modern monetary theory. I had been studying Austrian economics, praxeology, you know, I was on the LOL Bertarian track for Ron Paul. See, I, I'm not talking, it's not like I talk out my ass. I know this stuff. I came from there, right? So, you know, I give you the blueprint on how to defeat that logic. It's not like I'm coming at you as some progressive, lifelong progressive that's just always known these things. No, 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 my friends. I'm coming to you as the lone voice that has traveled the mighty waters across right, through all the hell and hell, right? To finally land where I've landed. And that's why I'm not partisan. Because every once in a while, the broke clock is right. And I want to be there when it's right. And I want to say, hey, it's right. You know what I mean? I don't want to just arbitrarily fight against the broke clock when it's right. And that's what partisanship does. It misses opportunities. And that's the full cup. That's the full cup right there. You know, the full cup thinks they've got it going on because of party loyalty, party allegiance, economic school of thought. They don't think through problems, right? Well, now, mind you, let's go through this again. I've studied Keynes. I've studied post-Keynes. I've studied praxeology along with the Austrian school. You know, it's that whole mindset. I've, I've definitely studied monetarism on the Friedman School, the Chicago School, all this stuff. I've gone through this. And it was only after very, very patient people, very, very different than I, that took me through all these, like, winding roads about what a dollar is. And you've never seen a dollar, Steve. Did you know that? You know you've never seen a dollar before? You've seen a piece of paper, but you've never seen an actual dollar. A dollar, it's an idea. It's a, it's a scorecard. That paper dollar you have is just a coupon. It's just a coupon. It's just an IOU. It's not, it's not really a dollar. I was like, what the hell? What are you talking about? But they kept going and kept going and kept going. Now, they were talking to me one-on-one. -on -one. They would call me up. They would send me inboxes. They'd send me articles. I'd wake up in the morning. There'd be 10 articles in my inbox that I had to read that day. And I read it not, not to learn, but to fight them. <laughs> you know, I read it to fight the MMTers. I didn't come to MMT the easy way. I wanted to fight the son of a bitches because I was still thinking Ron Paul gold standard stuff. I really was. This isn't, again, this is not me ignorantly just saying stuff. I'm not just some charlatan. I came by this knowledge the hard way. So as I passed through all that and the Fed crap, audit the Fed, end the Fed. This, now don't get me wrong. There's some stuff there, right? You can do different things there. It's not like I'm against investigating different things. My concern is that that is not your top priority, right? I'm trying to refocus you that debt in a sovereign currency doesn't matter. It's not debt like you know it. That word shouldn't be there. That word debt is really a bad word. It's more like national savings account, right? It's really not debt like you and I know it today. Like you and I know it. And so having to break free of strongholds myself, having to mentally get rid of the demons of praxeology and Austrian nonsense, the whole bullshit of taxes force, dude. But taxes force. What about the nap? What about the nap? What about Rothbard? Murray? 
you know, <laughs> you go through these freaking stages and it's like, if you lock in, if you don't stay awake, if you don't pay attention, you'll miss these opportunities to learn. Now, right over there on the outside of my car is my house. And inside my house is my beautiful lady fair, Melanie, and my kids. And they know I'm sitting here in my car right now, live streaming this to y'all. And they know that I live streamed earlier. And they believe so strongly in my message because they want my kids to have the things that we won't be able to have because we've got too many of you left to wake up. But she wants our kids to have the best of everything and she wants them to have an earth to inhabit. She wants them to have clean water. She wants them to have health care. So even though she doesn't share my passion, she appreciates that I do have the passion and she enables me to do this because she knows that there's no gain for me here, man. This is me desperate to, to wake anybody up that'll listen. I'm worse than that guy running around with the John 316 signs. You know? I'm standing on the corners telling anybody that'll listen. Hell, I have half a mind to go to the local Walmart and walk up to these people in camouflage that are out there in the pajamas and ask them, do you know what sovereign currency is? Do you know what it means to be monetarily sovereign? And engage these people in Walmart. What the hell, man? That's where they shop. Go there. Talk to them. Because I want to wake anybody up that will listen. I don't care what party. I don't even ask, what party are you in? I don't care. MMT is neutral. It doesn't, it's not about what you prescribe to it, right? When we talk real progressives, that's when we're talking about what we can do to leverage progressive ideals. But MMT, let me tell you something. Your taxes aren't funding Israel. They're not funding the war machine. They're not funding bases around the world. They're not funding subsidies to the oil companies. Your taxes aren't funding squat diddly. So when you think about it, the priorities right now are largely Republican priorities. They already get MMT. I'm trying to wake you up so that we, as progressives, can make MMT work for us, not just for them. And honestly, the sad part is, it isn't working for them either. Because they just think that by cutting you off from being helped on your mortgage, from being cut off from health care, that they're making the lazy people suffer. Hallelujah, lazy people suffer, amen? But they don't realize that the same money is being spent on the greatest socialist experiment in the world, the military. And that is their job training program for the Republicans. Go to the military, get your GI Bill. Republicans have a plan, they do, they really do. It's important for us to understand that they do. And they've been doing this for a long, long time. The Democrats have been doing it too. I'm a progressive. I have a different plan. And I want you all to think about what it is that you want today so that we can shift where the spending goes. It's up to us. They're not going to do it, right? They're not. They're not going to do it. The only chance we have of making change is for you and I to take this message out to the masses, out to Joe Q Public. Demand better. Demand better. We demand better, we might get better. You keep falling down for sloppy seconds, that's what you're going to get. Skinned up knees and salty lips. That's it. It's time for you to demand better. And the only way that we're going to ever do that is knowledge. 
And the only way to have knowledge is to keep your cup, not full, to make sure you always have room for new information. Guys, that's what I'm all about. I swear on my life. I get, you know, I want better for our families. I want better for your family. I want better for our planet. I think I've got the answers to the, you know, the keys to the kingdom here. I think modern monetary theory and monetary sovereignty unlock the entirety of the progressive policy space. I think they literally are the keys to the kingdom. It's that important. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't stress it enough. We can solve poverty. We can solve hunger. We can fix our education crisis, and we do have one. We can stop wars, and we can keep the military spending where it is, but shift it internally to make it go toward research and development, to make it go towards fixing bridges and fixing our energy grid. We can do these things right now. But if you're a full cup, if you think you got all the answers and you're not willing to read the links. Folks, these are not links that I've written, so it's not like I'm pointing to me. I'm John the Baptist screaming at the top of my lungs, hey, he that's coming, he's the guy. And I point to these economists and I point to the stuff they do. I wish they were out here beating the streets like I am. I really do. But that doesn't seem to be their M.O. They love the ivory tower. They like speaking in riddles and rhymes. I'm the working man's economist. I'm breaking it down for you guys. I'm the economist of the revolution. I'm trying to get you guys focused so that you can do the damage we need to do to build up. To build up the progressive movement. Folks, I'm telling you right now, there are 61,000 people in a group called Exposing the Rothschilds. 61,000. Everywhere I go, I've got someone telling me I'm peddling fool's gold because the, the money's not back to anything, so when the oil goes away, the economy's crashing, blah, blah, blah. I literally, literally lay out the links that prove this stuff from real freaking economists that are well respected, well written, and are easily accessible. Not for any, any, any personal gain other than a better country for us. It's that simple, folks. If you're a full cup, you think you already know. You run your yap, and nothing ever gets solved, right? You spin your wheels, you say things, and you say more things. Say the right things. Learn. All opinions are not created equal. I never ever say something that I can't back up with good hard research with a link to an economist that I know and respect whom I know understands monetary sovereignty. <laughs> now I've added two new links coming up here from Tim Canova. Tim Canova is not an MMTer, but Tim Canova does know the inner workings of the Federal Reserve. I'd like to think Tim's a friend of mine. He's definitely a friend of real progressives. Tim and I have some differences. Some of you saw me debate Tim a while back. And I'm starting to add his links because one of the things that's important to me is that you guys understand the fullness 
of what we're talking about here. I got to get you to understand that taxes don't fund spending. So you'll stop fighting pitch battles with the Republicans and start finding ways to make agreements so that we can build coalitions. Then after that, after you figured it out that we can work together and build single payer health care now and not have to wait 20 years because you've learned how to figure out how to work with Republicans. You've learned to speak the lingo. And you've learned to take progressive values. Sorry about the delay there. But you've learned to take progressive values and transform them into lingo that the Republicans can absorb too so that we can make progress. So later on down the road, after we get enough people understanding our parameters, well, then we could start getting cute and tweaking things, right? We can start getting cute and tweaking things. But until we get past the point where fools run up to me saying, what well, do you think we can just print till the cows come home, just print out of thin air? Until we can get past the dullards, the, the, the people that aren't even trying. You come to one of my threads. You come to one of my live streams. And tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. When I give you a list of links. You better be prepared to get skewered. I'm not going to hold back on the crushing. But if you come to me and ask questions about those links. You got a partner for life, folks. I will work with you till the cows come home. But if you shoot your yap off without reading the links, Darth Vader's coming out. It won't be Obi-Wan. Because I don't have tolerance or the patience for someone who's screwing with my time, my family's time. Read the links. Do your part of the job here. It's a two-way street. Do your work read then come back and ask questions but don't just sit there and fire off a bunch of nonsense at me without you know me do your homework for you no this is a personal journey that we've got to go through together for the light bulbs to go on for you you've got to do the work you got to do some reading I'm not going to do your homework for you I've broken it down so that when you read it, it will make sense. But to get the knowledge that you need so that your kids have a better life. So your kids have a better life. You aren't interested? Look at your children and say, Johnny, I'm just not interested in learning economics, Johnny. Susie, I'm sorry. I say I love you, but I don't love you enough to read these links. I'm a full cup. I don't feel like it. The feels won't allow me to care about you. That's what I see when I see people that skip the links and try and attack. I see you saying, I don't give a shit about my kids. I don't give a crap about them. That's what I see when I hear that. When I, when I see someone who hasn't bothered trying to read any of the links, but sits there and tries to take me on without doing the reading, that's all I can think of is them looking at their kid and saying, I just don't love you. I don't love you. I don't care if you eat tomorrow. That's what I think of when I see somebody that attacks without reading the links. Just being honest. Pretty harsh, huh? But that's how I see it. Anyway, with that, I'm Steve Grumbine. Please try to remain open enough to learn. Please do read the links for all of our goods, for my good as well. I need you to read them because I need you to help me. And for your kids' sake, read the damn links. Read the links. Now, 
you're not already a patron of Real Progressives, please go to our Patreon link. Anything would help. If you like writing, please sign up and be a writer for Real Progressives. We have a link in there. You can sign up. The, stru uh, the structure for how you write is all in there, nice and neat. If you'd like to, you can follow us on Twitter. We also have a YouTube channel as well. And of course, please check and see if I've invited you to this page. Some of you guys come here and watch the live streams but haven't actually clicked like the page or click follow. Please take a moment, verify in fact that you are following because Facebook loves to screw with us with the algorithms. In any event, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I'm checking out. I'm going to go hang out with the fam. Have a great one. Bye-bye.